Hello, Darken and Destroyers. My name is TBS Kine, and God damn it, Riot. God damn it. <laughs> Today, I've been waiting for Aatrox's lore to be released so that I could do a full breakdown of the character and analyze some of the differences between the old one and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And then today, they decide to release not just the, 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 the Aatrox lore update, they also release a full lore update for the entire race of the Darken, their entire history, everything they stand for, everything that they are about, and then they release retcons for Varus and for like the Darken in general and for the stuff that happened at Akathia, and they retcon some parts of what's going on with like the Ascended and the Sun Disc and Azir and Shurima, and then they retcon some of Varus's lore too while they're at it, just cause that's fun. So, uh, it's a lot. We have, we have a lot of stuff to get through. We have a lot of stuff to get through, and we're not going to get through all of it in this video. This video is going to be what's the deal with Aatrox. We're going to take a look at the new Aatrox lore. We're going to take a look at the new Aatrox's character design. We're going to talk about it for a little bit, and we're going to take a look at the voice lines. The voice between old Aatrox and new Aatrox. I'm going to discuss some of my thoughts about it. Because holy crap, that has been a major point of criticism between uh, between people who like old Aatrox and, and people who, who, who like the new rework is conflicts over the nature of the voice lines. So we're going to talk about all of that. And then I'm going to go away and try and figure out exactly how the hell I'm going to do videos reflect like, talking about all of the other stuff Riot has just released. God damn, could, Riot, couldn't you just like release like one thing at a time? Couldn't you just like, it's just, I, you do a thing and then you release that thing and then next week you release another thing instead of going two months and then all of a sudden, you just like dump, you're just backing dump trucks of thing up to me and dumping it on my head and now I have to make a video about it because that's the law now. The law says I have to make videos. They passed it last week. It was it was a, it was a whole thing. Like there was a vote for it and people demonstrated and now I have to make videos about it. And it's all your fault. Anyway, I'm falling apart at the seams a little bit. Let's talk about Aatrox. And let's start by talking about his lore. There's a couple of pieces of uh, fiction that are relevant to Aatrox. First is The Legend of the Darken, which is sort of a Reader's Digest version of the new Darken lore, like the, the, the new concept behind them. What are they? Where do they come from? What's going on with them? Then there's Aatrox's own bio, which we're also going to be talking about. And then there is his color story, which actually has quite a lot of interesting stuff going on. Now, usually I like to just kind of summarize my way through these because it takes a long time to read through them, but because they're all pretty short, I figure this time, just this once, we can read through them uh, together and I can sort of talk about some of the stuff that's going on. So, the legend of the Darken. The Darken are thrice cursed, once by the ancient enemy they faced, again by the fall of their glorious empire, and finally by the betrayal that has damned them for all eternity. When the rebels of Akathia foolishly unleashed the Void in battle, Shurima's defense was led, as ever, by the legendary Ascended. Imbued with power of the Sun Disk, these god warriors towered over mortal soldiers, wielding magic and blade with equal ease, and eventually they were victorious. Even so, the horrors of war took a heavy toll, and those who lived to remember it were perhaps never quite as they once were. Centuries later, with the loss of mighty Asir, at the very moment of his own ascension, Shurima fell. Although apparently immortal, the god warriors have been born human. Gradually, with no emperor to lead them, many of the surviving ascended began to falter in purpose as their older, petty ambitions resurfaced. They taught themselves forbidden sorceries and came to view themselves as the rightful inheritors of the world. The scattered mortal populace named these new tyrants Darkin, a whispered curse translating roughly in the old tongue as the Fallen. But even the Darken could not escape the sickness of soul that had come from fighting against the Void for so long. After centuries of uneasy alliance, they inevitably turned against one another, and so began the Great Darken War. This conflict spread from Shurima to Valoran and beyond. The renegade god warriors and the armies they raised were unstoppable, and entire nations were crushed between them. It seemed as though this would be the new end of all things, until, unexpectedly, the mages of Runeterra learned how to contain the remaining Darken. Through secrecy and cunning artifice, the physical forms of the Ascended could be merged with the celestial power in their hearts, and all of it bound within the weapons they bore. With their leaders imprisoned forever, the rampaging hordes were broken and slain. These darkened weapons were hidden, many of them carefully guarded by the mortal civilizations that grew in the aftermath, for it was clear that such power could be locked away, but never destroyed. 
And, should such power fall into the wrong hands, the Darken will surely rise once more. So, this is the new Origin of the Darken. For those who don't remember, and certainly I don't really remember, but the old Origin of the Darken was sort of implied to be that they were extra-dimensional invaders. Like, they were sort of, they were not from the Void, but they were from another dimension outside of the regular universe, and they kind of, they came in and they waged war, and then they were imprisoned in their weapons in order to end the war, and that was kind of the thing. They were essentially space invaders. They, they were aliens from outer space who came down to invade the world and do bad stuff, and then they got beaten. This has been changed substantially to tie it into the already present lore of Shirima. They are now exactly the same as Nasus and Renekton. They are the Ascended. Uh, mortal people who were imbued with the power of the Sun Disk and turned into something approximating gods on Earth. Uh, Zir is ascended, Renekton is ascended, Nasus is ascended, and uh, Zerath is a failed ascension. But essentially, that's, they're the same kinds of creatures, so they're on the same power level as your Nasus and your Renekton. Now, this, to me, introduces some problems with the, the, the current Shirima lore. Which, like, the whole thing, the whole reason why Shirima fell in the first place was because when a seer was going to be crowned and ascend to become one of the Ascended himself, then his protectors weren't available because Nasus and Renekton were called away to deal with a threat that Serath had unleashed in secret. Like, the whole reason why Serath's whole, like, managed to pull off his assassination attempt is because Renekton and Nasus weren't there, but now what we're learning is that there's like hundreds or dozens, who knows how many, but they, there was lots and lots more ascended, which kind of raises the question of where the hell were they? I imagine Riot are working on some kind of retcon to kind of explain away that that part of it as well, but, but, but this, it introduces a few continuity problems with past lore, I feel like, and it's certainly, like, you, you kind of have to ask the question about why, like, should they not update Nasus and Renekton? As well, as just like give them some voice lines or something to indicate that maybe it's not just the two of them. Maybe there's more stuff going on. Shouldn't Azir have some voice lines that kind of indicate that he has some relationship with the Darken? But that's all for later down the line. As for right now, I have to say I prefer this. I prefer this to the old origin of the Darken because the old origin of the Darken was just like came from space. Like there really wasn't. They they had no connection really to the fabric of the world, they were just, they just, aliens came from space, and then some of the wars happened, and then we imprisoned them, blah, blah, blah. But now, the Darken themselves are inevitably tied to the fall of Shirima. Now, it used to be that Shirima fell when a seer was betrayed, because it was the power of the Sun Disk and the power of a seer that held the Empire together, and without that one thing, the entire Empire was going to fall apart. Now, and this is something I'm drawing from some of the other lore content that they've released, the reason that Shirima falls is not just because a seer is assassinated, but also because without a seer to lead them, the rest of the ascended um, become corrupted, particularly by the horrors of Ekathia, and they can fall upon each other, and Shirima descends into a long civil war, and that's why the entire empire lies in ruin in the current day, air quotes. Um, and that, that to me, yeah, that works better because that ties the dark, like the whole thing about, it, the whole thing about the old Dark and Low Wars, there used to be this great war, this huge, enormous war, this terrible, and people died, and things happened, but there was really no, nothing about, like, there's really no part of League of Legends lore that was kind of connected to that. Like, you, you, it's like, oh yeah, World War II definitely happened, but we're not going to talk about where or where the battlegrounds were or who died or who was affected by it. It's like, it's like that kind of thing of having this great war that was super important, but then not having the importance of that war reflected anywhere in the current day of the universe, which is what this manages to correct somewhat, because now the Darken are actually kind of important. They matter to the current state of the world because it is their fault that Shirima fell, that Shirima fell apart and, and became this ruined empire swallowed by the sands of the desert. So that works. Which leads us on to Aatrox himself. Whether mistaken for a demon or god, many tales have been told of the Darkened Blade, but few know the re his real name or the story of his fall. In ancient times, long before the desert sands swallowed the empire, a mighty champion of Shirima was brought before the Sun Disk to become the avatar for a now-forgotten celestial ideal. 
remade as one of the Ascended. His wings were the golden light of dawn, and his armor sparkled like a constellation of hope from beyond the Great Veil. Aatrox was his name. He was at the vanguard of every noble conflict. So true and just was his conduct that other god warriors would always gather at his side, and ten thousand mortals of Shirima marched beside him. When Sitaka, the ascended warrior queen, called for his help against the rebellion of Akathia, Aatrox answered without hesitation. But no one predicted the extent of the horrors that the rebels would unleash. The void quickly overwhelmed its Akathian masters and began the grinding annihilation of all life it encountered. After many years of desperate battle, Aatrox and his brethren finally halted the Void's perverse advance and seared the largest rift shut. But the surviving Ascended, the self-described Sunborn, had been forever changed by what they had encountered. Though Shirima had triumphed, they had all lost something in their victory, even noble Aatrox. And in time, Shirima fell, as all empires must. Without any monarch to defend or the existential threat of the Void to test them, Aatrox and the Sunborn began to clash with one another, and eventually this became a war for the ruins of their world. Mortals fleeing the conflict came to know them instead by a new and scornful name, the Darkin. Fearing that these fallen ascended were as dangerous to ruin Terra's survival as the Void incursions had been, the Targonians intervened. It is said that the aspect of Twilight, that Zoe, gave mortals the knowledge to trap the Darken, and the newly reborn aspect of war united many in fighting back against them. Never fearing any foe, and the aspect of war would be uh, Pantheon, by the way. Never fearing any foe, Aatrox and his armies were ready, and he realized only too late that they had been deceived. A force greater than the Thousand Suns pulled him inside the sword he had carried into battle countless times, and forever bound his immortal essence to it. The weapon was a prison, sealing his consciousness and suffocating eternal darkness, robbing him even of the ability to die. For centuries, he strained against this hellish confinement until some nameless mortal was foolish enough to try and wield the blade once more. Aatrox seized upon this opportunity, forcing his will and an imitation of his original form onto his bearer, though the process quickly drained all life from the new body. In the years that followed, Aatrox groomed many more hosts, men and women of exceptional vitality or fortitude. Though his grasp of such magics had been limited in life, he learned to take control of a mortal in the span of a single breath. And in battle, he discovered he could feast on his victims to build himself ever larger and stronger. Aatrox traveled the land, searching desperately, endlessly for a way to return to his previous ascended form, but the riddle of the blade proved unsolvable, and in time he realized he would never be free of it. The flesh he stole and crudely shaped began to feel like a mockery of his former glory, a cage only slightly larger than the sword. Despair and loathing grew in his heart. The heavenly powers that Aatrox had once embodied had been wiped from the world and all memory. Raging against this injustice, he arrived at a solution that could only be born of a prisoner's desperation. If he could not destroy the blade or free himself, then he would embrace oblivion instead. Now Aatrox marches towards this merciless goal, bringing war and death wherever he goes. He clings to a blind hope, if he can drive all of creation into a final, apocalyptic battle where everything, everything else is destroyed, then maybe he and the Blade will also cease to exist. <laughs> so this is the new origin of Aatrox, a warrior who once fought for Shirima, corrupted perhaps by the Void, perhaps just by the trauma of being a mortal person asked to wield the power of a god, eventually turning upon the world and upon all the others in it, becoming trapped in his blade and in his profound desperation to be freed from this prison, from this torment, he arrives at one conclusion, one insane apocalyptic conclusion. The only way for me to die is if I kill everything else first. This is why his whole thing is being the world ender, the world eater, and so on and so forth. Why he's so obsessed with killing the gods, because in his mind, the only way for him to escape his fate is to destroy everything. Because it's the last thing he knows how to do. Which leads us on to his uh, short story, and I promise we're going to be done reading through stories soon, we're going to talk about other stuff, but... I really want to get through these lore stories because they're kind of important, especially to the discussion of the voice lines we're going to be having later, and also to a bit of the discussion about his character design. So, the cage. Darkness. The breath I cannot take plagues me. 
It is an emptiness in my lungs and throat, as if I had stopped mid-breath and then held my lungs cruelly waiting, my mouth open, throat hollow, unable to pull in air, my chest, the horrible tension on my thorax. My limbs and muscles refuse to move. I cannot breath. <laughs> Someone misspelled that. Breathe, it's supposed to say. I'm choking. The pressure builds. The stillness spreads to my chest and limbs. I want to scream, to tear at my face, to wail. But I am trapped. I cannot move. I cannot move. Darkness. I must remember. I must remember. The battle. I lost control. It was foolish. The mortals formed in ranks against me. I crashed into them, drank from them. The temptation was too great. As I reaped, I reforged their flesh into a better approximation of my true shape. Desperately, I consumed more and more, hoping for the briefest echo of what I once was. Instead, like a fire, I burned too quickly, destroying even my host's form. Darkness. It was raining when we fought. What if the mud and filth cover me? What if I'm hidden for thousands of years, trapped in this prison? The horror of that idea feeds my panic. The battle is ending. I can feel it. I must will my form upright. I must. I must. I have no arms or legs. The darkness binds me like a cocoon. No, I will myself upright, but I can't know if it is working. I cannot know anything but the darkness. Please, let some mortal find me, please. I beg the darkness endlessly, but the humiliation of my plea is answered only with silence. But then... I feel a mortal nearby. I have no eyes, no ears, but I can feel his approach. He is fleeing from adversaries. He must try to defend himself. He must grasp me. Can he see me? He could run past me. I would be left here. I feel his hand grip this form, and his consciousness opens to me. I burrow into him, pulling him down. I am like a drowning man thrown into the sea by a shipwreck, dragging myself to the surface by clawing past my fellows. What's happening? The mortal screams, but he is silenced by the darkness. The endless darkness I have just escaped. And I have eyes. I can see the falling rain, the muck, the blood of this slaughtering field. In front of me stand two weary knights with spears. I cut them apart and drink their forms, recrafting this body to, f to fit my needs. They are weak. I must move quickly. I must find a better wielder, a better host. Around me are only the dead and the dying. I hear their souls retreating from this world. The fighting has not ended. It's moved inside the city walls. I force my new shape, limping, crawling towards the sounds of battle, towards a better host. I roar, but not in triumph, never in triumph. I will drink from that city, but I will achieve only a grotesque mockery of my former glory. I was shaped by the stars and the purity of my aspect. I was light and reason given shape. I defended to this world in the greatest battles ever known. Now, blood and ichor drips from this stolen flesh as it decays. The muscles and bones struggle, tear, and protest the abomination I have become. I take a breath. No, Atrox, I say, my voice wet and echoing off the dead that surround me. We will go onward and onward and onward until the final oblivion comes. And this story, more than anything else, seems to be the primary core of what informs Atrox's character now. Not, you know, quiet confidence or some kind of, of emotional attachment to war. He doesn't really revel in the slaughter. He's not really enjoying himself or having any kind of fun. He is a prisoner, a desperate, mad, insane, violent prisoner, trying to escape his prison no matter what the cost may be, no matter how much pain or suffering he has to go through, he will escape, even if it means taking the entire rest of the world down with him. So that's kind of dark. <laughs> that is indeed kind of dark. And it's a very different Aatrox than the one we were presented in his old form, which was... He was sort of vaguely some kind of spirit of war who had some connection to causing people to fight wars and he liked, like, there's aspects of the old Aatrox still there. He still drinks the bodies and the blood of his enemies in order to sustain himself. So that whole, the drain tank aspect of the old guy is still present in the lore, even if it has kind of been removed from a lot of his gameplay. And we're also dealing with a lot of themes about the cost of war. Like, he's, he's associated with war, but instead of being someone who revels in it, who's someone who likes Pyrrhic victories and sort of uh, and, and, and revels in causing other mortals to go to war, that was used to be his connection with Trindomir, is that he was the one who caused Trindomir to be full of rage and full of bloodlust. 
Instead, now it's more a thing of, it's not that he enjoys it so much that he believes that it is absolutely necessary for him to find his freedom, for him to be freed from the torture that is his existence. And he's someone who's profoundly traumatized by what he has become. Like, he hates himself very, very profoundly. He hates himself. He hates what he looks like. He hates how it feels to be him. He hates his entire existence. He is suicidal. So where the old Aatrox seems to represent some kind of crazed bloodlust, some kind of, of almost Helsing-like appreciation for war, someone who just enjoys the concept of war, who embodies the concept of war, Aatrox, more than anything else, embodies a kind of these sort of the idea that these are the consequences of war like the horrible things that war can do to a person the monster that it can turn you into no matter how noble you are at the outset Aatrox is kind of supposed to be a living or undead as it were example of what war will do to you if you are exposed to it for long enough because that's again in the lore the primary thing that breaks the Ascended, that, that that starts to turn them against everything that they once stood for, is the horrors that they experience at Ekathia, with the horrors that they experience when fighting the Void. Which is something that Aatrox also expresses in some of his voice lines, where he wonders whether he is Void corrupted, like whether that is what has happened to him. So, let's have a look at those voice lines. Now, like I said, and we're going to have to turn off the music for this, um, like I said, the voice lines are kind of a big point of contention um, with the old Aatrox. The, the, the comments I saw on my video about Aatrox anyway was a lot of the complaints centered around the idea that new Aatrox has kind of been turned into a cartoon supervillain. Like this large ham who's just kind of, blah, blah, let us go to war, blah, 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 blah. Kind of just shouty and kind of annoying and, and shouting jokes and taunts all over the place and being kind of, a little bit, like, not not really having the dignity of old Aatrox. Now, I'm going to say up front that I prefer the new, new voice lines greatly, and I'm going to make an argument for why I, I think the new voice lines are better. But one of the major things for me is that Aatrox has this. Like, these are all of his voice lines, all of them. Uh, I counted them to be, like, something like 34. He's got, like, 34 voice lines, and most of them are... Fight and be remembered as a hero, or die and be remembered as a coward. Fight as a hero, or die as a coward. Fight and be remembered, or die and be forgotten. Die with fear in your heart, or win with blood on your hands. That's that's kind of all of old Aatrox. That's that's pretty much that's this is kind of for me at least. That's mostly because it's fight, fight or be forgotten. Teach them to fear us. Sow the seeds of strife. Pain is temporary. Victory is forever. War reveals what is within us. They will greet you as heroes. True warriors are born in blood. So, old Aatrox has like one theme to him. Like he, ha he has one mood, he has one thing he cares about, and that is war is super good. Woohoo! War! Kill! War! Fighting! Yay! Great! We like that. That's pretty much all of all of his voice lines are some variation on that particular theme by contrast well the thing that people have been criticizing let's start there the thing that people have been criticizing a lot is look at your noble courage darius now learn despair scissors for legs okay i thought i had seen stupid designs before all right, let's go. Scream Demacia, Garen. Scream its name before I trust you. And it. Guns and oranges? Are you a cliche or a joke? Come, fight. You would rush towards me, Kaiser? What fool would build a strategy on that idea? Come. Let us begin. Are you a joke, you loud, horrible thing? I shall kill you and your steed. 
Where is your head, Roxing? Where is the neck I shall sever? So this is the thing that, that a lot of people haven't had a try Hail had some the protector. Hail Daric, aspect of Get a haircut. This. This is what a lot of people have been critical of. And I I tend to agree that in a lot of his voice lines, Aatrox kind of transitions from the kind of dark, tragic, sort of desperate, broken hero that he's kind of supposed to be into, like, another version of fucking Skeletor. Like, that, there's a lot of... You would end worlds as a bow? I do not need to show my mastery. It is self-evident. What is property? Why did this dead hamster want me off of it? Honestly, a bow and two boys? What was your plan, Varus? Right. And I, I kind of take the same issue. There's a lot of his voice lines where it's kind of... He's just kind of making dumb jokes and being loud. And there really isn't much to that. I, ha I have to agree with that. that. For some of his voice lines, they really haven't struck a good balance. But here's the balance that I think is important, and this voice line is all the way down at the bottom, which is kind of annoying. Violence distracts me from these chains. That voice line right there for me is kind of the key to understanding the personality that Aatrox is kind of supposed to have here. The thing that they're trying to go for, um, which is this sensation of a warrior for whom the warfare has kind of become the only thing that was left to him. Like, the only escape for him is to lean into the war. And that touches very much on the on the core concept of his character, this idea that he's this prisoner, this, this, this creature that's imprisoned in the sword and who's desperate for a way out, so desperate, in fact, that he's willing to destroy the entire world just for a hope, for some, for some notion that maybe there's a way out for him. Maybe there's a way for him to escape being trapped, escape being kept inside that darkness. Like, the way that they describe it, especially in, in the color story, like, it is an emptiness in my lungs and throat as if I had stopped mid-breath and then held my lungs cruelly waiting, my th mouth open, my throat hollow, unable to pull in air, my chest... Like, he's, he describes it, his baseline of existence is essentially a, a state of constantly choking to death, but never actually dying. And that is kind of... For me... That's that's really the 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 core of him, and this is something that comes across in a lot of his other voice lines, especially the ones that happen when he d makes a long move on the battlefield. He has voice lines like this: Kicked into this existence, fallen slave and trapped by endless life, I shall become a beast, feeding on their destruction and making them lament my unholy birth. I have. No goodness left. It was taken from me, stolen. I am the nemesis of life. The heavens. The endless skies folding into each other. Where are they now? How far I have fallen. Have God reduced to a prisoner. Once in noble battle, I screamed against the silence. I stood as light against the darkness now. I serve a new master. Oblivion. I shall not kiss the ground, nor let myself be wielded as a tool. I am damned, but I will remake this world in my dark image. I touched the stars. And saw the glorious light of a thousand suns. Oh, blinded by this elegance, how could my purpose be anything but dark? And here's another good one. We march to battle. Let me carve flesh. Let me cloak myself in the slaughter. Hide me in their carnage. Hide me from this suffering. 
this is Aatrox's motivation. This is the character that he's supposed to be now. So when you get into these kind of ridiculous voice lines... A statue? Rock shatters as easily as bone. Come. I kill God's priestess. Let us continue this fight until all things stop. Am I challenged by a tree? Fine, let me build a pyre from you. Hail, Father Orn, God of Fire and Forge. <laughs> I am Aatrox, and I am the God Killer. When he does this, when he when he comes into battle, that's when he copes. Like that's when he's desperately trying to escape that feeling that he has of his flesh like the flesh that he steals from mortals that he possesses is constantly decaying his 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 host is constantly falling apart it's never permanent he always has to be looking for the next person that he can use as a host for his sword because they all keep burning out so he's always running on borrowed time he's always you know on a timer he's he's never safe ever he's always at the risk of being trapped once again in the sword and maybe this time it will be forever so when he charges into battle, part of the reason why he has so many taunts is because he needs people to fight him. Like, he needs people to come at him. He needs them to fight. He needs them to give him blood that he can use to remake his form. He needs them to destroy his current form and take his weapons so he can possess them. He needs people all the time. He always needs someone nearby that he can either consume or possess. And if he doesn't have either of those things, well... Back to the prison he goes, back to the cage. So that, to me, that's my read on it anyway, that this is why Aatrox is this loud, screaming... The only peace I seek is death. I am oblivion. I am destruction. I am doom. I am, I am not a king. I am not a god. I am... Worse. He will call me a god killer. Gods and mortals. They deserve only death. Kneel, mortals. So I may split your shoulders from your spine. All of this is bluster. He's faking it. Essentially, he's faking it. He's, he is possessed by rage and vindictiveness and a thirst for vengeance. But most of all, he's scared. He's terrified. He is absolutely scared shitless of being trapped in that sword again. That's the one thing he cannot stomach. That's the one thing all of everything he does, everything he does in all of his stories is about finding a way to escape that prison, finding a way to escape being imprisoned in the sword. That's what we learn in the in the bio is that it's like at this point, he's so desperate that he has decided, OK, I can't destroy the sword. I can't escape the sword. The only thing that's left to me is to destroy everything else and just hope, hope that that means I become destroyed as well, right? That's that's the nature of Aatrox. That is who he is. And that, that's very much what I like about the voice lines. The ones that are good, the ones that aren't. Scissors for legs. Okay. I thought I had seen stupid designs before. The ones that aren't that. The ones that aren't just silly jokey jokes. Like, jokes, I think, should be kept... In the joke command, like in the like in the taunts as well are like. I'm like a demon, but uh, more edgy, right? You know, because I'm sword. Hmm. So uh, I'm Aatrox. I'm a transcendental being trapped inside cutlery. What you do? I chose a sword, the noblest weapon, Drast. You. Seriously, I don't understand. Were you trapped in the gardening section? Varus, V-A-R-U-S. Your name should have an A and then another A. Varus, there was a memo, Varus. There was a memo. That shit is like... That undercuts the kind of character that they're trying to set up with all the other stuff. Because, like... If on the one hand you want to tell us that this guy has, there's literally nothing left to him. The only thing he cares about in the entire universe is destroying the world in the hopes that he might escape his prison. Like, that's the only thing he cares about, is the only thing that motivates him, it's the only thing that matters to him, it's the only thing that's there at all. Then you shouldn't give him taunts 
for the other Darken, who are like the only other creatures in the world who might understand his suffering and his pain, then his taunts to them shouldn't be, were you trapped in the gardening section? Or there was a memo, Matt Varys, there was a memo. They should have something to do with them instead. Like, I think that kind of jokey joke stuff should be put in the jokes section. Like, that, that, that should be his joke, not his taunt. And that's just like, that's that's just an unfortunate little bit of... I mean, it's also like this this listing here, I'm not sure it lists things correct correctly. It's possible some of the things that are supposed to be jokes are actually are actually triggered with a joke command, but still, it's a little bit there's some dissonance there in terms of the character that most of the lore is trying to tell us that he is. And some of the voice lines, which is kind of like, that guy seems like he's like not quite as angry and as concerned with his fate as he should be. <laughs> so yeah, generally speaking, I didn't I was never really inspired by old Aatrox. Like, there really wasn't much depth to him. He's just like, I like war. War is great. Let's just kill things and have war. And that to me was not super interesting because there really wasn't anywhere to go with that except have him fight things, I guess, forever. With Aatrox, there is a lot of, like, there's a lot of emotional suffering, there's a lot of backstory, there's a lot of emotional baggage with him about being trapped in the weapon, about becoming who he has become, that I kind of, I quite like. Like, that, to me, in terms of storytelling, in terms of the stories you can tell about a character like that, there's a lot more there. Like, you can tell stories about who he was in his glory days, about the great person that he used to be, about the kindness that he used to exemplify, about the honor and the duty that he used to stand for, about all the good things, the all the dreams, all the ideals he used to have, and then use those as a tragic contrast with the single minded, completely destroyed, corrupted parody of his former self that he has become. Like, there's lots of opportunities for storytelling there that I don't really see with old Aatrox. Like, sure, you can tell stories about him, but there's not, mu there's not much depth of personality there to explore, at least not in the lore as it was presented back then. So, the character design. I've already talked somewhat about Aatrox's new character design in my old versus new video. There's going to be a link to that down in the description. Um, but I will say, new Aatrox is fine. I think he's kind of... I think the trouble with Aatrox, and I think the trouble with the Darken in general, is that Riot made the Darken without really knowing what the hell they were doing with the Darken. That's always been Aatrox's problem, is they made him, they released him, and then they did absolutely nothing with him for years and years. Like, no part of who he was and his aesthetic and the whole thing about the race and all the stuff they did set up ever got expanded upon, and now when they finally have time to expand on it, they've had to retcon everything all over again. Actually, let me just put some music on. Um, and that... That's always been the trouble with Aatrox, and that's also one of the troubles I have with the character design, is that new Aatrox, when they remade him, they kind of had to base it on the old one, like, they kind of had to include the same color scheme, and he had to have the sword, and he had to have the wings, and he had to have the steel gauntlets and stuff like that, and I, for me, nothing about Aatrox looks Shuriman, like, at all, none of it does, and nothing about Rost looks Shuriman either, because when those two characters were designed, they didn't know that they were going to be from Shurima, so they couldn't really they couldn't really incorporate those design elements. And even worse, like the whole thing about Aatrox's demonic corrupt form is that he's supposed to be a parody of the greatness that he once was. I think, in fact, unless I'm much mistaken, uh, Justicar Aatrox is kind of supposed to be what Aatrox looked like before the fall, sort of, but the trouble is he's supposed to be sort of a brutal, disgusting, you know, falling apart parody of the greatness that he once was, but that doesn't really come across in his character design. He just looks like a demon guy. A really cool demon guy, but he just kind of looks like a demon guy. He doesn't look like a dark mirror of the aesthetics of Shirima. He doesn't really look like he's falling apart or burning out or anything. Like, he doesn't look like he's half-formed. He looks powerful. He looks vibrant. He looks vital. He looks like he's got a host that could contain him for a hundred thousand years without any trouble. Like, there's no physical visible signs of the decay. There's no physical visible signs of him sort of just barely clinging to life by constantly consuming other living beings. There's really none of that in there. And I lay a lot of the blame for that on the fact that when they redesigned Aatrox, they had to keep the old aesthetic. They had to keep a lot of the old colors. They had to keep a lot of the old, like, old, you know, demon generic 
thing going on, and they couldn't really redesign him radically. Or, well, I mean, they could, and I feel like they should, but they didn't, because they wanted to keep the old Aatrox. They also had the problem that they had designed Rast since then. Like, he was the first Darken they'd made in, in ages and ages, and they ha didn't know that he was supposed to be Shuriman at that point, so Rast also looks absolutely nothing like a Shuriman. He looks nothing, he's nothing visually to do with Shurima, nothing visually to do with, with that kind of aesthetic, nothing visually to do with the idea that once he takes over Cain, he become, he, he starts to decay and fall apart, if indeed that's how their story turns out. And it's just, yeah, I feel like, this, like I said, I really do like that the Darken have now been integrated with the rest of Demacia. I really, uh, uh, not Demacia, um, Shurima and the rest of Runeterra. I really do like that. I really do like the idea that they represent kind of a commentary on the nature of war. Like the, even no matter how great or how powerful or how good or how noble you are, and good lord, the music is really loud. No matter how great and powerful and noble you really are, the the consequences of war will corrupt you. You will fall. You will be taken apart. You will be destroyed. It will get to you, and it will eventually turn you into a brutal parody of your former glory. Like, that's, as commentaries go, that's a pretty strong political statement on the parts of League of Legends, even if it's probably rather unintentional. So for me, yeah, I do think new Aatrox is a, is a strong improvement, but he's a strong improvement that comes with just like a lot of loose ends and a lot of little bits and bobs and pieces just kind of hanging off and dangling threads that haven't been resolved, problems that j were just kind of inherited from what he once was. And for me, honestly, what I would have liked them to do is go even further with the rework. Like just completely throw out old Aatrox, completely throw him out, everything about him, all of it. And I know that would have pissed off a lot of players, that would have pissed off a lot of people, and it doesn't feel good to have stuff taken away from you. It, it would not feel good to have old Aatrox taken away from you completely like that. But in terms of making the new story work, I think like, I, I feel like they should have had the courage to just say, okay, we are going in on this 100%, because right now they've gone in on it like 80%, and the last 20% are really, really noticeable. And it's just kind of a pity. Like, and then, like, you know what they should have done? They should have done a completely new rework, like Trundle. Right? They should have done a Trundle-style rework, where they completely rework every part of him completely to work with the new lore, and then they make a traditional Aatrox skin where he still looks like how he used to and give that out for free to the Aatrox players. That's the thing they should have done, frankly. That would have been the way to do it. This feels a little half-assed. Like, it, well, it's not fair. It feels like they've put a lot of effort into it, but then there are like a few places where they haven't gone far enough and where they haven't quite gone whole ass. They've gone like three quarters ass. And that last quarter of ass that's missing. It's just... You notice when there's a quarter of an ass missing. It's noticeable. Anyway, I think I was running in circles a little bit there, and good lord, I messed up the production somewhat with the audio. Now, I record all of these videos live. Like, this is one take. I don't edit anything together because I want the videos to be kind of conversational. I want it to be informal and conversational, like we're chatting. Uh, even though you can't talk back to me except in the comments, which you should go down if you have a comment. Like, if you if you have some feelings about old Aatrox, I should, I should make this clear, by the way. If you prefer old Aatrox, I'm not here to say that you're wrong. That you prefer old Aatrox, that's cool. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying I prefer new Aatrox, and I would have preferred if they went even harder on making him completely new Aatrox. But if you liked old Aatrox, that's fine, and you should feel free to tell me so in the comments if you'd like to. There's also a like button, there is also a subscribe button, which is very helpful. I do have a Patreon if you want to support these videos being made and help me uh, just make more of them and have the time to get to make, uh, good lord, videos about the whole goddamn Varus update and Darkin update and Sharima update and the Targon update that's kind of coming along with, like, it's not, it's all kinds of new shit has been revealed about Targon that we have to deal with now. That's going to be in the next videos. For now, if you didn't like this video, that's completely fair. This has been kind of off the cuff the whole time, which is 
yeah, <laughs> par for the course for my channel. If you didn't like it, that's completely fair. There's a dislike button down there that you can click on. Um, I should just warn you, though, that that dislike button was sealed away 10,000 years ago at the bottom of an ancient magical well in a sorceress kingdom far across the sea. And we're pretty sure it's fine. Like, it's just, it's old superstitions and it's, you know, it's, probably nothing's gonna happen if you click on it. It's probably gonna be fine. Like, it's, you know, it's just, there were old legends on the walls and there were all kinds of booby traps when we got it out and stuff. And like, it, like all the other people on the on the archeological dig are dying now, but that's probably like, just heart disease or something. It's probably, you, know, you can click it. It's fine. It's fine. You'll be fine. Thank you very much for watching.